Liquid screen protectors are neat for many reasons, with the first being that it's, well, it's liquid glass. The second is that it improves the impact protection of your device. A tiny layer of glass can improve the strength of your screen by actually a decent amount, and I know that for a fact. The downside of liquid screen protectors is that they are heavily marketed as improving the oleophobic coating and scratch resistance of a product, and I'm less convinced that that actually happens. At the end of the day, I wouldn't use a liquid screen protector by itself. It's a good add-on accessory for an existing setup of a case and existing screen protector. Now specifically for the Nano 2.0, I tested the oleophobic coating and impact protection. I did different tests with other brands such as Woosh as well as Spigen. So if you're interested in seeing how liquid screen protectors deal with cracks and scratches, I'd recommend watch my in-depth video where I cover everything you need to know about liquid screen protectors. Real usage, real reviews. Mobile reviews, eh? .ca. And Mobile Reviews, a Monty and I base all our videos on actual usage, this awesome dog. Liquid screen protectors are tougher to review as we have to wait 48 hours each time we apply it to a device. With the Nano 2.0, I put it on my Apple Watch Series 2 and iPhone 6 Plus, a rock, as well as a screen protector. Now the Nano 2.0 had the most marketing fluff. On top of the normal claims of hardness, water repellent, and scratch resistance, they added antibacterial and anti-radiation as well. I'll get into this marketing fluff in a bit. They're not really lying, but at the same time, it's well, kind of, I wouldn't say stretching the truth, it's just interesting, we'll say. Installing the Nano 2.0 was no different than any other screen protector we came across. We slathered the liquid screen protector on our devices and rock using a wet wipe. Oddly enough, the Nano 2.0 was the only product that actually felt different. The Woosh Diamond Defense felt like a regular wet wipe, and the Spigen one felt, well, kind of like a wet wipe as well. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I was most interested in the oleophobic and the impact protection with the Nano 2.0. To test the coating, I used my oldest iPhone, a 6 Plus, and did a water droplet test to see how worn down the screen was. I then added the liquid screen protector to the device and let it sit for 48 hours. I redid the water test and really couldn't see a difference in how quickly the water came off the screen. To give you a sense of how an oleophobic coating is supposed to work, check out how quickly the water rolls off the side of my iPhone 10 with the stock oleophobic coating on one side compared to the other side that's been stripped by a magic eraser. Now at this point, it may seem like the water repelling nature of the liquid screen protector is false, but the rock that I put the Nano 2.01 did repel a little bit of water. Didn't do a whole lot after I resubmerged it, so it's in, not entirely false. There is a bit of evidence saying that it does repel water just a little bit. It's just not as strong as the coatings that we're used to when we get a brand new phone or a screen protector. Now, if you want to see if these liquid screen protectors improve the scratch resistance, do check out my in-depth video, again, in my longer video, where I actually scratch an iPhone 10 with a speaking liquid screen protector on it to see, well, what happens. If you're finding this video useful, considering getting your products through my Amazon links. This was not a sponsored video. So all the damage and all the stuff and all the time that you saw uh, in this video was, well, comes out of my own pocket. So any sort of help will be greatly appreciated so that I can just basically make more videos in the future. For impact protection, I took three identical screen protectors and coated one, only one, with the Nano 2.0. I will note that this was the fourth thing I coated. So I wasn't expecting, well, the screen protector to be terribly strong. I used my old screen protector testing apparatus and used the first screen protector to determine approximately how high it would take for the glass to break uh, from an impact using a 200 gram steel ball. It broke at nine inches. I used the second screen protector to make sure that was kind of the right height. The second screen protector broke at 10 inches. Then I used the glass with the liquid screen protector and started to drop the ball at 10 inches. And then 11, 12, 13, it broke at 16 inches, which is pretty neat to see. The added protection isn't really marketed by Crystal Tech, which is kind of odd in my opinion, since they do have so many other things that they do market. Now onto the antibacterial properties for the marketing fluff. Anyways, uh, from my understanding, that automatically occurs when liquid glass cures. So every liquid screen protector is gonna have some sort of antibacterial property. And the anti-radiation bit, well, you are adding glass to your device. So it is gonna stop something. So that's all I got for this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down there. Again, I do recommend that you check out the longer video that I've done with liquid screen protectors. And I do go through all the questions that I had about these products, like does it fill in cracks and scratches? I'm not gonna tell you the answer. You're gonna to have to figure it out yourself or watch that video. Thanks for watching.